So another question that we get is, how do you get new varieties of mangoes? And the quick answer is cross-pollination. The mango flowers need to be pollinated in order to form the fruit. And sometimes there's an interesting mango cross. For instance, an Indo-Chinese variety of mango could pollinate an Indian type mango and get hopefully the best characteristics of each variety. A lot of times you don't get the best characteristics. And so in order to get a superior variety of mango, you have to be really, really lucky. Now, in the old days, like thousands of years ago, they had the luxury of just planting a whole lot of seed and then seeing which tree had the best fruit. And then they would take the seeds from that fruit and plant a whole lot of trees and see which of those trees had the best fruit. So that's basically similar to a homeowner tasting a great mango and then planting the seed hoping to get that same quality or even better quality from that seed. So sometimes you actually get a mango from the seed that is at least equal and very rarely superior to the original fruit. But it takes a long time. You know, the grafted trees can produce fruit in two years, sometimes a little bit longer than two years, depending on how fast the tree grows. But uh, mango from seed can take sometimes over 10 years to produce fruit. It takes a lot of trial and error before you get a superior variety. Uh, for instance, Gary Zill uh, planted about 12,000 seeds uh, from which he selected approximately 40 to 50 superior varieties. So that gives you a good idea of your chance of success from planting a seed. There are thousands of varieties of mango fruit, so maybe you'll get lucky and get a great variety if you plant a seed, but the safe way is to get a grafted plant. So if you're an organized person and you want to try and make new varieties of mangoes, uh, then generally you would keep track of what fruit each seed was from. And so then you know the mother plant, but the pollinating parent is always a guess. There's two basic classes of mangoes, the Indian type and the Indo-Chinese type. Of course, they've been mixed over the years, but uh, if you plant a seed of Indo-Chinese type, those seeds will often give you an exact replica of the parent tree. So if you plant a seed of an Indian type mango, every seedling will be a little bit different from the mother plant. And sometimes a lot different, depending on the pollinating parent. So a lot of people want to have a certain cross, like for instance, a Glen and an Edward cross. They thought that would be the ultimate mango. It's very difficult to make that happen. Pollen is everywhere during mango season, and so even though you're trying to hand pollinate some of the flowers on the panicle, uh, other pollen could get into your experiment. Also, out of the hundreds of flowers that are on a panicle, perhaps only two of them would actually form fruit, sometimes none. And so you would be hand, trying to hand pollinate all these different flowers. There might not even be a fruit to plant the seed from. But if you did get the fruit and you planted the seed, then you would have to wait uh, three to sometimes more than 10 years before that particular seedling would fruit. And then sometimes that first year is not even a good indicator of what the fruit's really like. So you might have to wait another year or two. Uh, but anyway, so it takes a long time. So what most people do is plant a grafted tree and plant the grafted tree will produce fruit very quickly and you have a known variety and uh, the common misconception about grafted trees though is a lot of people think that if you graft say an edward uh, scion onto a glen plant that that would give you a new variety of mango doesn't work that way uh, whatever type of mango 
that you use as a rootstock is just that. It's just the roots. And the scion that you put on that graft or graft onto those roots becomes the tree. So no matter what variety you graft, say Edward onto, you will always get Edward mangoes.